repeat our analysis of variance using SPSS. The data in SPSS is organized as two variables, the group one of three, second group of three, third group of three, and the values for all the measurements within those groups. We can identify the groups by changing our view to show the value labels. We can see that each number represents a different group. Let's take a look at those variables right now. We see our measurement variable, which is a numeric variable. We see our group variable. The group variable is identified by different values. The value 1 is identified to represent Fred, the value 2 to represent Jim, and the value 3 to represent the group Alice. Let's go back to our data view. We're going to perform our analysis. Of course, we we'll go up to Analyze. We're comparing means. We're going to choose one-way analysis of variance. SPSS presents us with a selection box. First thing we do is move our measurements into the dependence list. And then we identify for SPSS what the different groups that those measurements are broken into will be. And then we go ahead and perform our analysis. SPSS opens an output window and prevents us with a table with the results of our analysis. We see that it's calculated the between groups sum of squares, the number of degrees of freedom, the mean squares, the within group sum of squares, the degrees of freedom, and divided one into the other to get the mean squares within the groups. And then it calculates the F score, which is the mean, mean sum of squares between groups divided by the mean sum of squares within groups and finally calculates the significance or p-value 0.44. The significance represents the probability of achieving an f-score that large if the groups were from the same population and the means were all equal. In other words, if the null hypothesis were true. The probability of being wrong if we reject the null hypothesis is 0.44. Since that's less than our acceptable level of uh, error, 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis and we accept the alternative hypothesis. When we did this calculation using Excel, we determined our F score. From that, we went to a table which told us what the critical value of F would be for that number of degrees of freedom. We didn't get an exact percentage for the probability of being incorrect if we reject the null hypothesis as we did in SPSS.